the, the pyramids do something very interesting when you measure the magnetic fields inside. They, they basically nullify the Earth's geomagnetic field while you're in there. And it's, they, it links in with a lot of my other research on videos I put out about Kozarev mirrors and mm. uh, the work of Dr. Michael Persinger of how it could affect consciousness. So that tends to be my pet theory but based on what I've been there and measured that they actually do. When I go on expedition, I bring a magnetometer, you know, infrasound devices, uh, mm -hmm. various things to, to actually measure the, quote, energy of the place, but in a scientific fashion fashion to see if it would have any uh, biological impact on the mind, uh, on brain function, uh, as we know that the magnetic fields do, like our mind-to-mind uh, -mind system, there you go, that pulses a magnetic field around the, uh, around the head and can alter consciousness like the God Helmet, if you've ever heard of the God Helmet, Persinger's God Helmet. What is the God Helmet? God, okay, so this is a good one. Uh, Dr. Michael Persinger, actually, pull out his research. Yeah. Here's his research. Uh, Persinger was... Uh, a black ops scientist for the longest time. He was working with the Navy, figuring out consciousness, the patterns within the brain that cause things like senses of spirituality, sensed presence, um, senses of meaning, mm. um, various things. And he mapped areas of the brain, like the temporal lobes, the hippocampus, that correlate. And if you read some of the, uh, the titles to those studies, he found things like uh, entanglement. So he was the first person to, I don't know if you ever heard about this, to take a person in Canada and take a person in Spain mm -hmm. and he put these headsets on them and he flashed a light in the eyes of the person in Canada and picked it up on a brain scan of the person in Spain, proving that they could be entangled. What year was this? Did he do this? Just few, it, it's right in there. Really? I, got, I actually have the studies. Ah, I came prepared. There you go. Wow. But that's, those studies came with a lot of other uh, findings. The God Helmet was something he created, uh, geez, I think it was all the way back in the 80s, certainly the 90s that they were talking about it publicly, mm. uh, that could replicate out-of-body experiences, sense presences, like you're you know, sitting there in a, in a room, a dark room. This says God. Uh, 2015. 2015. Yeah, well, he's been doing it for, he, he's, wow. he's since passed, unfortunately, but he was doing it for decades. That's crazy. And there's another one in there as well, where it's uh, they were sharing the experiences of people playing a video game, and somebody who was an expert at the video game was giving the other person their ability with the video game through entanglement. Consciously or Con unconsciously? Unconsciously. You, you put this around. This is this is the actual device that he was using. This is the God Helmet? This is a, a, a small version of it, a pared okay. down version. Steve can, yeah, there it is. There's the God Helmet. Motorcycle helmet with a magnetic oh, sailors. Oh, I have seen this. Yeah, and he was making people have all kinds of wondrous spiritual experiences replicating the brain patterns when they're under those experiences. And this is a very small pared down version of it. You put the halo around your head, turn it on, uh -huh. and it's the same equipment that they were using for the entanglement experiments. So what specifically does that, when you have two people hooked up to that thing, what, what specifically is happening? Persinger's theory was, you, you could consider it whatever you want to call it, the morphogenetic field, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Akashic record, whatever. We have names for all this field that we live within, the conscious mm -hmm. field. Consciousness being external of the, the body and the yeah. brain. But we tap into it. Our minds are, our nervous system is a transceiver. It's a transmitter and a receiver. Mm -hmm. Part of the receiving portion of that is we're immersed in this field and we share our experiences and we can go out and remote view and tap something we have never had physical contact with. We can also do the same for things people have touched. Uh, he had somebody he was studying that was able to do that with a picture of, of somebody. You can also go out and communicate with somebody's experiences and brain and memories. And that's what he was proving in these experiments. And this was all, it's like he had a coming to Jesus moment later in his- So this is amplifying the antenna of the human sort of? Pretty, it's, it's blocking the area, blocking the signals within the brain that keep you unaware of it because we're always have we we always have it we're always immersed in this but we have something called a binding frequency in the brain and if you block that correctly with a magnetic field over the right uh the right hemisphere it can open up all kinds of interesting things wow oh yeah and how he, did he find this he was working for the government for the longest time and i was about to get to that that yeah. he was a uh, he kind of had a coming to jesus moment later in his career and released it all he just went here it is, guys. This is what we found. This is what it all is. This is how you build the equipment. You can go out. He did a talk that I actually put on my YouTube called No More Secrets. What would a world be like if you could remote view, know what the other person was thinking? If there was no way to keep secrets from one another, what, what would that civilization look like? That would not be, that would be ugly. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think it'd be fucking ugly. Yeah.
Yeah, I, I know people like Joe. Him. People like Joe Rogan talk about it all the time, and he thinks yeah. it's like a really good thing. Like he always speculates, yeah. like, what would it be like if we could read each other's minds? He mm. thinks he seems to think there'd be no deception, there'd be no lies. Uh, the, but like the people funding that research don't, don't believe, don't don't agree with it. They right. they want to cybernetically link minds together as a form of control to make peace. You know, yeah, yeah. The way the way you ultimately get peace in a civilization is <clears> to have a cybernetic linkage of all the minds that negates their ability to have violence. That's fucking terrifying. Right we could talk about that too. Here's so, a changing image as a man. That was the, the uh, Stanford Research Institute uh, think tank paper published by Ghislaine Maxwell's father that talks all about it. What? And, yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> do with that what you will. Welcome to Museum of Tarot, kids. This is what I do. Uh, no, that was published back when they were doing the remote viewing experiments. Uh, by Robert Maxwell. Yeah, his, his publishing, the Pergamum Press. Publisher, Robert Maxwell, MC. Yeah, he, he personally funded that one. Stanford Research Institute was doing all the remote viewing experiments with Bill yep. Swan, Pat Price, all these guys. Um, and at the, it talks about that as how, how to take that and weave it in with a new new agey belief system that could ultimately replace all the old belief systems and be used as a tool of control for the new world where everybody's cybernetically linked. They had Joseph Campbell, the mythologist, trying to figure out how to create new mythologies for the world. And that was the blueprint of how to create the new world, the new civilization. And that's kind of, it kind of links back to what you, you asked me about Graham Hancock, why I kind of fell off with Graham Hancock. I saw a lot of these people that I grew up with in their research weaving in far too closely with that kind of research and realizing, oh shit, that's part of the agenda. Part of the agenda. Seems it, yeah. Giving us a far flung history we can never possibly completely understand and it's all gonna be mysterious. Everything's meant to be mysterious forever. You're never make it, meant to get any answers to anything. And it's uh, it's all part of the control mechanism. It goes way back. What a mind fuck, what a mind man! Fuck, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. So you you wonder why I in my videos <clears throat> I have different opinions about this. I might look at something and you might look at something and we come to radically different opinions. Yeah, it's based on context like that that I might have seen something that it goes. Well, the funding came from the same place that funded that, and uh, Graham Hancock might have gotten money from here, or, or somebody, some researcher might have gotten money from the same place. And I go, is that connected? Wow. So I tend to be a little more cynical about things because of that. 